So if you have a population and you're studying some aspect of that population, what you'll find is that you know, your data is distributed in this normal distribution, okay, sometimes referred to as a bell curve because of the shape. And you can see right down the middle here, this is the X bar, that's the mean. 50% of the data is gonna be above the mean or the average and 50% is gonna be below. But if you look at the standard deviations, okay, of your data set, you know, if you go one standard deviation to the right of the mean, above the mean, okay, greater than the mean, you can see that will encompass 34% of the data. Or if you go one per, uh, standard deviation below the mean, that's 34% of the data. Or if you're one, per, uh, one standard deviation either side of the mean, that's encompassing 68% of the data. But sometimes it doesn't always work out where you're dealing with exact multiples of standard deviations, like one standard deviation, two standard deviations. And so that's where the z-scores come in. So here's our formula for calculating the z-score. Okay, z equals your data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So what this does for us is that it's calculating how many standard deviations, positive meaning above the mean, or negative meaning below the mean, uh, that your data point is. And there are standard normal distribution tables in your textbook or online, and you can find out exactly what percentage uh, you know, you're dealing with, okay, whether it's you know, above the mean, below the mean. Now, the way a lot of these tables work, okay, most of them work, is that when you find out, let's say your z-score is like a one point, uh, let's just say, let's say it's 2.5 standard deviations above the mean, let's say it's right there. What the table will do is it will give you the percentage that are at that value or below. So it's always gonna give you this area of this curve that's to the left of that z-score or that number of standard deviations. So if you wanted to calculate the amount above, since this area underneath this curve is one, or you could think of it as 100%, you would have to actually do one minus this area to get this little area above that to the right. Okay, so that's something to, to be aware of. So again, X is our data point, X bar is the mean, and then sigma is our standard deviation. So let's look at an example to see how we work with this. So say that the average height of a student in your school is 65 inches, okay, with a standard deviation of three inches, find the probability that if you pick somebody at random, that their height is less than or equal to 60 inches. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use our z-score formula. We have z equals, okay, 60, which is our data point, minus the mean, which is 65, that's the average height of a student, divided by three, which is our standard deviation. So if we calculate that out, we get, uh, let's see, negative five-thirds, okay, which is approximately, uh, let's see, negative 1.7 if we round to the tenths. Okay, so what you can do is you can take a look at a standard uh, normal distribution table, and if I go to negative 1.7, okay, I can see that it's 0 0.0446. Okay, so this is 0 0.0446. So what that means is, if we go over here to negative 1.7, right there, okay, the area to the left of that line, okay, this part of the curve, that area is gonna be about 4.5%, okay, so 0.0446, if you convert that to a percentage, that's about 4.5%. So the probability would be, or the chance would be 4.5% that somebody would be lower than that height or, or shorter than that height. Okay, let's go to the next one. Say that the probability that you pick somebody at random that they're greater or taller than 70 inches. So same formula, z equals 70 minus 65, the mean, divided by the standard deviation. Here we're getting approximately positive 1.7, okay? So if we go over here to 1.7, that's gonna be right about here, okay? And we're trying to find the probability that somebody is taller or greater, so meaning to the right. Okay, now if we go to our standard normal distribution table or chart, you can see here that it's gonna be about 0.9554. Okay, so 0.9554. But that's giving you the area to the left, okay, below. We want the area that's above to the right. So what we have to do is we have to do one minus 0.9554, and we get approximately 0.0446 okay, which is again about 4.5% uh, chance that somebody's gonna be taller, okay, than 70 inches. 
Okay, so you're with me so far? Okay, last example. Say so you want to find the probability that you're in between 60 inches and 70 inches tall. Okay, so what you would do is you would calculate the two z-scores, like we did here, but you're trying to find, you know, let's draw this curve again. You're trying to find the probability that you're in between here and here. Okay, so this is uh, represents 1.7 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, the mean is right down the middle. And negative 1.7 standard deviations below the mean, okay? And we're trying to find the area here in between those. Well, the way that the charts work is that it's giving you the area below. So when we do positive 1.7, it's giving us this area 0.9554, okay, which we got from the last problem. What we have to do is we have to subtract off this area here to give us the leftover. So we're gonna take the 0.9554 minus this area here, which we got was 0.0446, and that's going to be this leftover area here, which I did that calculation for us here, and that comes out to 0 0.9108, 0 0.9108. So that means it's about a 91% chance that somebody's going to be, you know, greater than 60 inches but less than 70 inches.